Adobe has just released a new Spring update, including some new features for Lightroom. And these features are really, really good. Besides tethering improvements, checkerboard support, and a few new supported lenses and cameras, the real big news is a newly added mask, which is called Landscape Select. And this mask is doing way more than you might think. Let's take a look at it. All right, for this shot, I already have applied some basic adjustments and a little bit of color grading. And now I want to do the masking. Let's open up the masking panel by clicking this icon right here. Here we got the usual masks, but with the addition of the landscape one. Let's click on it. As you can see, Lightroom is detecting landscape features. And after a while, we can select different parts of our images. For example, for this particular shot, we have the sky, the mountains, and we have the water. These selections do look pretty solid at a first glance. Of course, they are not working perfectly, but they don't have to work perfectly. The good thing about these masks is we can further modify them. So right away, this will speed things up a lot. So let's say we want to work on the sky. I'm going to click on that sky checkbox. And what I'm going to do next is to create a mask by clicking this button right here. This is pretty much like the usual sky selection mask. Let me real quick do some adjustments here. I want to modify this. So I'm going to click on this mask, go to subtract, and I'm going to subtract a radial gradient. I just don't want the bottom part of the sky to be affected by the adjustments I will be doing now. I'm going to drop the exposure to make the top part of the sky darker and more dramatic this way. Let's also give it some more contrast. Wonderful. Now that looks pretty good right away. Let's try something else. Again, let's create a new mask and here we want to choose select landscape. Then let's say we want to make the cliffs look a little bit deeper and contrasty. Therefore, we're going to select the mountains right here. Again, all we need to do after activating the checkbox is to click on Create Mask. And we get a pretty good selection. Again, it's far from perfect, but as with the sky mask, we can modify this to our needs. So I'm going to subtract. Let's use a brush right here. I don't want to affect those grassy hills in the foreground. So I'm going to just brush over them real quick, getting rid of the selection right here. All right, then in the back, there are also parts selected, which really shouldn't be selected, but that doesn't matter. We can clean it up easily. And now what I'm going to do is to add a little more punch by bringing up the contrast, making these cliffs a lot darker. I also think I want to bring up the clarity, just have some more details in here. Maybe let's also bring up the texture. All right, this is looking great. Now let me deactivate this mask to see the difference from before to after. Wonderful. But what about the water? We can change that as well. Let's create another select landscape mask. Then we want to select the water, of course. Again, this mask is selecting a little bit more than needed, but it doesn't matter. Let's click on create mask. And I'm going to say subtract and let's choose a brush. And we're going to clean up this selection. This would have been super, super annoying to select using something like maybe a color range mask or a luminance range mask. But this would have taken so much more time. Now it's just a few clicks and we get this nice looking selection. What do I want to do with the water? I do think I want to add a little more punch by bringing up the contrast. I also want to have a little more structure in on the water right here. I'm going to bring up the texture for that. Let's also bring up the clarity a bit like this. All right. And let's deactivate all the masks so we can see the difference from before to after. And all of this was done using only Lightroom's new select landscape mask. Pretty good so far. Of course, we can do other things with this as well. Let's say I want to add a little bit of glow right there in the back. I'm going to use a radial gradient like I usually do. I want to make that part of the sky glow. Let's place the center of this radial gradient over the brightest spot in the sky. Now, I really don't want to affect those mountains in the foreground. Of course, again, we could use some, something like a color range mask or a luminance range mask. But we can make it much easier by subtracting a select landscape mask. And in here, what are we going to subtract? Of course, we're going to subtract the mountains. Check the mountains and click on Create Masks. And just like that, we got rid of that part from our radial gradient. Now we can add the glow effect. Let me bring up the blacks. 
Let me also bring up the temperature, adding a little bit more warmth to this area. Maybe like this. I'm going to bring down the highlights just a notch. And let me increase the dehaze for a very heavy glow effect like this. All right, and there we have it without affecting the mountain in the foreground. Of course, there are more things we can do with this mask. Let me give you another example. All right, so you see on this image, I already have applied a bit of masking. Now I want to fine tune it. Let's create another select landscape mask. And since we're working on a different image, this AI mask will detect new objects. So besides sky, mountains, water, we do have artificial ground and natural ground. Again, you see these are not working perfectly. In fact, artificial ground is completely wrong in this case, but this can be useful in other images. What I want to do is I want to select the water, which is a pretty good looking selection. So let's create mask and I'm going to subtract with a brush cleaning up the selection because the foreground really doesn't need to be selected. Now I want to give the reflection a little more punch and I'm going to add a lot of clarity for that, maybe some texture. And I think I'm even going to bring up the contrast. Okay, that's looking really good. Now selections like these were really, really, really painful to do previously. Again, this newly added AI landscape mask makes things much, much easier. Let me give you a third example with some architecture in the image like this. So let me create another landscape mask. Again, since we have different elements in the image, the AI landscape mask will detect different things. So again, we have a sky mask, a mountain mask, but this time we also have a mask for the architecture in the image, which is really, really useful. Then we do have the artificial ground mask, which makes a lot more sense in this image. You see the road in the foreground selected. So I could use this, let's say create mask. And again, let's modify it by subtracting using the brush. We really don't want the snow to be selected on each side. And let's also deselect a bit of the top. Now what I'm going to do is to bring up the contrast, making these leading lines in the foreground darker and give them a little more power in this image. Now there's one more thing I want to show you. So let's create one more select landscape mask. And this time I want to kind of make the distant mountains and the, the foreground a little less contrasty. So I can click on the mountains and I can click on natural ground. Now I have two different areas selected, which I can combine into one singular mask. I could also create separate masks by clicking on this checkbox right here, but that's not what I want. I want to combine these two into a single mask. All I need to do for that is to check them and click on create mask. And just like that, we have a newly created mask, which would have been impossible in this way with the previous Lightroom version. So this is really, really cool. Again, let me modify it a little further. I'm going to subtract the linear gradient, taking out the foreground like this. Now we could bring down the contrast a bit. This helps separating the subject from the rest of the background. Could also play around with the white balance temperature, giving the background more of a golden hour light like this. All right, and that was a quick guide on the newest Lightroom masking spring update 2025. Have you already tried this? If so, let me know in the comments. Maybe you have found some neat little tricks that are useful to the rest of us. Looking forward to read your comments and thank you so much for watching this quick video.